Hello, everybody. Thank you so much to everyone who is joining live tonight. And thank you so much to everyone who is watching the replay. I'm so sorry that I am a few minutes late having some technical internet difficulties. Of course, I needed to reboot my internet right when it was time to go live. It's like the internet knew that this is what was going to happen tonight. So I'm so, so sorry. Hello. So many friends already in the chat. Oh my gosh. Y'all are already answering the questions about like what you're drinking. Every Everybody already knows the First question, which is what are you drinking? If you are here live and you haven't already, drop it in the chat. If you are watching the replay, please let us know down in the comments when you're watching and what you're enjoying, what you are drinking. So we've got lots of water, it looks like tonight. I have tea with me tonight. I have some of my raspberry tea and my All Goals Are Achievable on the Right Timeline mug. Okay. Let's see. We've got lots of water, lots of water. Oh my gosh, Melissa, keep teasing me with that peach crown. It sounds so, so good. Um, iced tea because of my migraine, migraine. Oh, Lisa, I hope that you feel better a little bit. Mm. Um, all right. Having some wine tonight. Oh, Elise, that sounds delicious. So, so much water. Thank you, Taylor. I love the yellow too. It feels so like springy, but like still kind of a neutral color. I really like it. Uh, how's Charlie? She's good. She has been sleeping in the bedroom during the day. That's been like her go-to space. I don't know. She just doesn't want to be with us. I don't really know. It's very, very interesting. Um, all right, really quick, before we jump into the questions, I just want to really quickly remind you to join the Accelerate Your Goals, which is my online course waitlist. If you are interested, this is the last week that I can talk about the waitlist because by this time next week, those on the waitlist will already have the link to purchase. And if you are on the waitlist, you will get a bonus a additional piece of content from me for just signing up for the waitlist. So if you are interested in the course or in your, or you're not even sure if you're like, I might be interested when it goes live next week, I highly recommend that you go ahead and join the waitlist. I have it linked in the description box down below. If you are a patron, do not worry about signing up for the waitlist. You will get the link even earlier than the waitlist and you will also get a little bit of a discount. So if you're a patron, don't worry about joining the waitlist. But if you are interested, I just wanted to give you that one last reminder because next week it'll be, it'll be time. Like it'll already be happening. So I don't know. I'm so excited. Okay. Oh my gosh. Loretta coffee. It's like midnight over there. Hi, Kaden. Um, Oh, Taylor, I appreciate that. I, I sometimes on Wednesdays, I won't get ready until lunch. Like I won't put, do my hair and makeup until lunch so that it looks better by the time I get here. Also, I don't go to and from work anymore, so it doesn't really matter anymore. Mm. Thank you to everyone who is saying kind things about the course. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys are the best. Have I watched any good movies lately? Amy, honestly, we haven't really watched a movie movie in a very long time. We have just been watching a lot of TV shows. We've been catching up. To, I mean, a lot of the TV shows that we watch are current right now and they have new episodes. We watch SVU and now we watch Organized, Organized Crime. That's what it's called, the new one. We watch Top Chef. We watch Handmaid's Tale and Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. And then I also watch Grey's. So I feel like we are always catching up on those shows that we watch. And then we also have been watching Superstore for the first time. It's on Hulu. It's hilarious. It's kind of like The Office set in a Walmart, basically, <laughs> is the vibe. Um, I was never super into The Office, but I love Superstore. But I also love America Ferrera. Is that how you say her name? Um, so we're enjoying it. So that's pretty much all we do is watch those shows. We just don't really watch movies. <laughs> it's only 11 so that does not make it any better Loretta it's still way too late for coffee way too late for coffee what am I reading for fiction right now Lisa I actually have it right here because I had a couple minutes which before the live I feel like I haven't quite mastered how long it takes me to set up given that it's been over a year I just got some of those memories recently apparently we didn't actually start until May even though we were all at home earlier than that anyways I'm reading Firefly Lane um I did watch the show on Netflix. Recommend. It's great. I also, I mean, like these two actresses are fantastic. And now I am reading the book. Um, for the most part, at least to where I'm at, it's very similar to the show. There's nothing drastic that's different yet, minus the way that the show does the timeline. But I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. So that's what I'm reading. 
Fiction. Fiction. That's fiction. I don't know why I can't keep that straight, y'all. Like, which one is fiction and which one is nonfiction? Why is it so hard for me? I have no idea. Ooh, and then Nancy Drew on the CW. You know, we saw commercials for that when we were watching the 100 on the CW, which ended, uh, but I have never watched it. Maybe I should give it a go on my own. So those are all the things that I'm watching with Sam. On my own, I'm still watching The Nanny. If you watch my vlogs, I've talked about that. And I still have a long way to go because there are like a bazillion episodes. Um, but Nancy Drew is probably something I would just watch on my own with <laughs> Sam. Oh, I'm so excited that you're next on the list for The Lazy Genius. Oh, The Lazy Genius Way is such, such a good book. One of my favorites. Marissa, there is a new Cook Once cookbook. Oh my gosh. I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to buy the new one until I've cooked my entire way through the, the current one. I haven't cooked my whole way through. There's some weeks that I will probably always forever skip. Like, I don't like tomatoes. So if there's a week where one of the main ingredients is tomatoes, I'm not going to use it. For those of you who don't know what she's referencing, there's a cookbook that I love called Cook Once, Eat All Week. Um, and then I also skip some of the weeks where the meat is like a, like a pricey piece of meat. Like brisket feels like a special occasion, not just like a weekly dinner. But I haven't seen anything about that new cookbook. She's also from San Antonio, I learned, which is where I'm from. And I just thought that was so cool. <laughs> Yes, Heather. So I actually have an app, <laughs> which is ridiculous, but I have an app that I have all the TV shows that I watch in. And so it will update when there are new episodes and then I can check them off as I watch it. But like I like checking things off. It also helps me know like, because we don't have cable. So it's not like I have a DVR situation set up. And so like the week of the draft, the NFL draft, there was no new SVU. And so it was like, is, was there a new one? And I can go to my app and see if there, that there wasn't a new one, was or wasn't a new one. Um, there might be a tail in the screen in just a second. So anyways, um, I saw on my app that Lego Masters will be back on June 1st. I'm very excited. I, I made my siblings watch with me when I was home in Chicago because I was like, you guys need to watch this. It's so good. Yes, After I Do is so good. That's definitely um, probably my favorite fiction book I've read so far this year is After I Do. I know, Lisa, that's like the, it makes sense that fiction equals fake and nonfiction equals not fake, but like I just, I still, str I struggle with it a lot. Irma, are you still enjoying No BS? Yes, I am. I, um... I am really behind on podcasts right now. I feel like I'm always behind on podcasts. I used to listen to them when I commute. And since I don't commute, I I like them just get really behind. But I do still try to listen to hers. Um, I just, her mindset is just, I just really like it. So many, Lizette, you started watching The Nanny again. I'm not sorry because it's great. It's super great. Okay, I'm glad that it's not just me, guys. Like, I don't know why I cannot, cannot. Um, the app for tacking, tracking TV shows. Uh, let me let me pull it up. It's red. It is called TV Club. That's the one I use. I didn't like go researching them when I first signed up for it. I just picked one that served what I needed to do. And now that it has all my TV shows in it. I'm not going to change it. So that's what I use. It's called TV Club. The NFL schedule comes out tonight. I did not do that. I did not know that I've been distracted by um, basketball and the Spurs, like barely eking their way into the playoffs. Oh, goodness. Well, Claire, all the TV shows that I just mentioned that we still currently watch, I definitely recommend. The ones that have ended that I recommend, the 100 is fantastic. The last couple seasons get a little funky, but at least the first three are great. Um, I also love like Gossip Girl and Gilmore Girls. Those are some of my go-to friends. Like I go back and watch, rewatch those. Oh my gosh, yes. There's so many nonfiction books that come out and so many nonfiction styles. And it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to keep them separated. <laughs> Amanda, what is something I track that I think is weird? That, the fact that I like have an app for my TV, 
show watching, I feel like is a really strange thing that I track. Um, other than that, not, I don't really think anything else that I track is that out of the world. I mean, maybe how I track things or that I track things in multiple places. That's probably a little, a little bit weird. Oh, Loretta, I, you know what? So the first time I tried watching The Crown, I couldn't get into it. After the Meghan and Harry interview, I gave The Crown another shot. And I binged like the first three seasons because I got through like one season of the new um, cast. And then we moved. And so I kind of, so I stopped. Um, I need to go back to it though. I feel like here's the problem with The Crown. And maybe that you don't have this issue because you are from there. I need to watch it with subtitles. I like I need I need to watch it with subtitles. Otherwise, I miss things. And so it has to be a show that I'm sitting and watching and not doing anything else. I can't watch it while I multitask. And that's like that's really hard for me to find time to do that, especially for hour long TV shows. Do you feel like your goals are achieving day by day? or week by week, or month by month, or year by year. Jersey, all of the above. I feel like I take my goals for the entire year, and I break them down by quarter, actually, and then by month, and then by week, and then by day. And so I I feel like I have, I have to look at it that way. Otherwise, I will never see progress, and then I will get incredibly unmotivated. Corey, great question. How do you signal yourself to start getting ready for bed? I want to have a good nighttime routine, but I get wrapped up in TV shows. So the one thing that I do that definitely helps me with this is I have, I do my evening routine as soon as possible in the evening. Most of the time when I'm on my game, which I am three for three so far this week because Sunday counts as a weeknight. Um, it's when right after we're done with dinner and since Sam does the dishes that it like kind of works together for us to do them at the same time. So if I like, I'm like, hey, you should do the dishes now and not wait till after bed, after we go to bed. Um, as soon as we're done with dinner, I will start my evening routine, wash my face, brush my teeth, put my pajamas on, tidy up my office, like all of those kind of nighttime routine type things while he does the dishes. And then we go sit on the bed or on the bed, on the couch to watch TV. And then I'm already ready for bed. And so there's not that, oh, not only do I have to get up and go to bed, I also have to like get ready for bed. That would unmotivate me to get off the couch. The other thing that I do, I used to have an alarm on my phone, but now I have a lamp that automatically turns off at 9 p.m. in the living room. The lamp in the living room, I got one of those smart bulbs. I got it for Christmas from my dad, but I finally set it up and it turns off. It turns on before I wake up in the morning, which I love because then it's already on when I get out of bed and it's already light in the apartment. And then I turn it off when, or it automatically turns off at 9 p.m. And so that's the signal. It's time to go to bed. Taylor, I'm glad that the task batching video was really helpful. I I think it's one of those topics. It doesn't, it's not a clickable thing, right? It People don't see that and they're like, oh, I need to watch that video. That must be really helpful. But I think the information in that video is incredibly valuable. So if you haven't checked it out, checked it out, I would recommend. Oh, Lisa, this is a great question. How did you feel about flying? What was your experience? So for those of you who don't know, I flew home a couple of weeks ago um, for my godmother's celebration of life. And honestly, I I think I was okay. Like I was ready to fly. I was fully vaccinated. Um, and Sam was going to be fully vaccinated by the time that I got home. So I felt like the from that standpoint, I felt okay doing it. It still felt weird, that's for sure. Like going into the airport and being surrounded by that many people. Both of my flights to and from San Antonio were packed, like to every seat was full. Um, and so I would not have felt comfortable had I not been vaccinated. I also thought that I was going to get uncomfortable keeping my mask on for that length of time. Yeah, I could take it off to take sips of my drink or a bite of food, but for the most part, I kept it on the whole time. And that's not something that I'm used to. I know that there are a lot of you that wear your mask full time at work, depending on what kind of job you do. And um, I applaud you. That's amazing. Teachers, healthcare workers, even those of you who work, say in like retail or something along those lines where you have to keep your mask on all the time. It didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. That, that's the end of the story. So um, it wasn't so bad. Oh, I lost my spot. Hmm. Have I ever used Notion for project tracking? Nope. The only 
project tracking thing I've ever tried is Asana. And to be honest, I don't even really use it to track progress projects or progress. I keep it for like running lists of things. Um, I've never really gotten into a project management system that I felt like has worked for me. Oh, this is a great question. So I can get started on goals, but how do you stop doing something, Mia? So, excuse me. Um, my first inclination, my first thought to give you advice is to just reframe it. And so to replace it with something else and to start doing something else that is going to in turn help you stop doing that other thing. So for this example, it would be like drink more water or drink another kind of drink, drink tea, drink something else that you would drink in place of that soda. Maybe it's, maybe it's coffee, something caffeinated, something like that. That is for this particular example, it's tougher because it's something specific that you want to quit. And so all just like with any other goal, you just start small. So however much pop soda you're drinking right now, just cut it back by a little bit, like 10 percent and do that regularly and just track it. Don't worry about going from 100 to zero. Worry about going from 100 to 90 and tracking it regularly. And then once you have that rhythm, go from 90 to 80 and track that regularly and keep going on that path until you get down to a point that you feel comfortable or until you get down to zero. Um, I think I kind of did that when I like stopped biting my nails. I stopped biting all but a certain number of them and I still, my right thumb still gets uh, the brunt of it when I feel the need to bite my nails. But it was, it was easier than just quitting all of them. How much sunlight does your apartment get? Do you have any west facing windows? I'm not going to share the direction of my windows because I just feel like for safety purposes in New York City. Um, but my apartment does get a lot of sunlight. It's it's wonderful. I do still have a light set up right now um, because at this time of night, it is actually getting much better as we get closer to summer where there is enough light for this session to not worry about it. But when I do things during the day, when I film during the day, I don't need a light at all. It's awesome. And if you are fully vaccinated and not ready to get on a plane, that is completely okay. That is completely fine. I don't know that I would have gotten on one that soon had I not had that reason to get on one. Um, besides that, we didn't have plans until the summer. So, and that's probably what we would have stuck with. That probably would have been the first time I got on the plane. It's still the only plane I have planned between now. Like that's the next time I'm flying is July. So um, if you're not ready, that's totally okay too. Do I love the cold versus the hot jersey? I, I mean, don't we all just love that like perfect right there in the middle? Um, the best time of my life was in college when I was in Austin, Texas for nine months out of the year, including when it was really cold. And then I was in Chicago during the summer. So when it was really hot in Austin, I got to be in the beautiful Chicago summers. It was perfect. Um, I would prefer to live somewhere warm if I had to pick between the two. My significant other disagrees. He would rather live in the cold. So compromise. We're not, this is not a compromise. This is where he would rather live, but it's one of the things I've compromised on. Picking at my nails is the hardest habit for me to kick. Taylor, get your nails done. If you can fit into your budget, get them professionally done. That is how I stopped picking at my nails because I paid somebody to make them look that perfect. And then I couldn't, I wouldn't pick at them. And I got a gel, like a gel manicure. You're thinking of flying to Dallas in July. Your husband's still trying to convince you to leave New York. You guys, you just have to do what you feel comfortable doing. And I was listening to a podcast um, the other day. And at this point, everybody's tolerance level is different. Everybody's risk profile is going to be different. And we just have to all accept. Sorry, Charlie just jumped up and knocked at the table. We just have to accept that we're all going to be in different places and we have to respect everybody's decision to do what they feel comfortable doing. So yes, professional nail done. And then always keeping them painted always helped me with quitting my 
quitting nail biting. I quit multiple times before it finally stuck, but that was one of the things that really helped. I know, Charlie, now she's sitting right next to me. What is my favorite pen for the plum paper? Oh, goodness. The Sharpie pen, like just the, sh just the Sharpie pen. This one, it's this, I use the fine size. I, I keep saying that I'm going to try the thicker one because I do like thick pens, but this one's working for me. And I bought like a 12 pack and still have a ton of them. And so until I like really feel the need to buy new pens, um, I'm just sticking with this. I finally accepted that I didn't need to own 800 types of pens. I just don't. I need to own my favorites. So I literally have a pencil case that's got my two favorite pens. It's got the Paper Me Flare and it's got the Sharpie pens. And like, that's all I need. And then I have a couple other stragglers. I've got a sharp, a thick Sharpie, a thin Sharpie. I've got the micro, micro perm for Christy and Design stickers. I've got a couple of the uh, clicky, um, what are these called? What, are, what is the, sorry, what is my, no, not the tool ones. I do have a tool one though, but um, these, the Sharpie S gel, that's like, my other, like, that's one, like, clicky type pen that I like to use that certain things need. Um, but for the most part, my two favorite pens. And that's it. I'm done using pens I don't like. Oh, my gosh. As someone who lives in Dallas, I would avoid it in July. That's probably also good advice. Texas in general in July is not nice, not fun. What is one thing you can do this week to make a difference in someone's life? I mean, it depends on who that someone is. I think you can make a difference in it. Like, what do you do for work? Can you, you're, if you're a teacher, you're making a difference in someone's life every day. Um, can it be your significant other? Can you like give them appreciation, tell them what you're thankful for that they do, you know, that would make a difference in their lives. Can you donate something? Even if it's something small, it all adds up. That would make a difference in someone's life. I was the same way. I was getting them done. And then when things hit, it was, I switched doing them at home, but that happened. That was years ago that I, that I got them done consistently in order to quit. Abby, what books do you recommend for exploring your Enneagram? Honestly, I haven't read any Enneagram books yet. I have a couple on my shelf that I want to read and I have one that I'm in the middle of right now. Not middle. That's a lie. I'm at the very beginning of, um, for me, I just have been following things on Instagram. And that's where I learn a lot about the Enneagram. Um, the two I have on my bookshelf are the Honest Enneagram and then Taking Care of Your Type, which is kind of like self-care by Enneagram type. What is my pen marker storage solution? Literally this. And then I have, it's attached to the stand that holds my planners, has the like miscellaneous ones that I use. And then I have, this is funny. I have this, I'm going to show you, um, white container on my desk that holds all my colors. So it's got my mod liners. It's got my dot pens that I use on my plum paper. And then it's got these cold favorite matters markers. I can't bring myself to throw them away, even though I'm not using them. Um, but it looks pretty. This was actually a flower arrangement that my mom sent me for my birthday years ago. Like not my old apartment, the apartment before that. Um, and I just keep it turned around so you can't see the happy birthday hilarious but that's it that's all I got oh my gosh the plastic the kitties in the plastic I don't understand it how long am I going live I usually stay until seven that's usually six to seven is when I when I go live It's true. I'm, it's the 40 days on being an Enneagram 3 book that I finally started, and I'm on day 5. So 5 out of 40, I would not call that in the middle of the book. <laughs> Great question. What color mild liners or dot markers do you find yourself gravitating towards the most? So for the mild liners, it's either gray, and I keep it very simple, or I love the bright, whatever this color scheme is called. I don't remember what other. I think this one maybe is part of it. Like these super bright ones. Those are the ones I always go for. And then the dot markers, again, it's either the gray, I'm keeping it basic and simple, or it's the color that matches my plum paper. And so it's really like the peach, the purple, 
the like bluish color and the teal because there's not that many color like in the plum paper there are 12 different colors but they belong oh and the green they belong to like not that many color families right so you've got the peach the green oh yeah and this is only six months they got the two blues and the purple um so those are all really that's it those are the ones i grabbed for that's pretty much it that pen block would look good with the plan with lake and logo on it <laughs> that's a fun idea that i mean i can't imagine what that i don't know that would be fun though how was the friends experience oh my gosh elise it was so cool i vlogged it that'll be up on friday it was fun where did you find the dot markers that you used in your plum paper amazon i have them linked my amazon shop is always linked and they're in my amazon um, you can get them individually on jet pens if you just want a couple of the colors. So if you don't want to buy the entire pack on Amazon, that's what I did because it was the first time I bought them. But you could go to jet pens and buy the individual ones, but jet pens charge you shipping. Um, but if I was trying to be thoughtful about it, I would only buy like five colors, those five colors I talked about. But I love them. I love them. Yes, yes, the dot, the dot markers. They're the best. Plum paper released the modern color scheme and everything except the A5 DLA. I just want the neutral one. That I could, I, I don't even need the modern color scheme. I need the neutral color scheme for the A5 daily. And I, I've heard like, just go up to the, to the bigger one. I'm not going anywhere anyway. I'm just using it at home, but I like the small one. I just, I can't, Ugh, I don't know. Mm. And same, Lisa, I also ordered a July through December daily on the Mother's Day sale and got the same color scheme, same color scheme. Oh, Amazon has them in a six pack. I wonder what colors it comes with. Probably not, because let's be honest, when things come in smaller packs, are they ever the exact colors that you want? Like never. Um, like if I had my perfect pack it would be like the plum paper pack, right? It would be like, it would be these ones and the green. What am I missing? The peach, the teal, the green, the blue. And then I think you need this purple. And like, that's basically it in the gray. That would be the perfect, the perfect pack. Oh, plan with like an interchangeable planner covers. That's a fun idea. I'll be honest, a um, little secret. I really want to do planner bookmarks, but they're, it's hard. Getting that, that coil lineup to match and it's, it's hard. So. Do I like happy planners? I have nothing against the planners, the products and anything. I just don't like discs. I don't like discs in any way, shape or form. I don't like, I don't like the way they look. That's just me. I don't like all that flexibility. I just, I'm not a disc person. So that's why I'm not a happy planner person. I also don't like sticker books. I like my stickers to be able to put like individual pages and put them in a binder. So for that reason, I don't tend to use happy planner products. Lisa Marie, have I considered the plum paper for a work planner? I have for a work planner. I do like the hours. I don't want hours on my personal, which is why the plum paper is perfect. But for work, I like having the hours so I can just see my day at a glance and see how much time I have. And so for that reason, the plum paper doesn't really work for me. I'm liking the, the lights planner action one that I've been using. It's perfect. Can I do a day in the life of Sam? I don't think he would agree to that. <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, Amy, I'm not saying that they can't be made, but I'm saying that I'm not going to make them because it's a lot of work. And the, like these products that I've released are being made on a mass scale. And so to get those bookmarks made on a smaller scale would be very difficult. And that's just, um, not necessarily not, not on my list right now. Mm. exactly Taylor me too I can't function when there's too much flexibility I just I'll, I would switch it up too much my perfectionism tendencies would would hop out and I wouldn't be able to just like turn the page and keep moving I would want to like rip it out and print it out and punch a new one and just start all over and it would just be crazy Uh, Allison, I graduated with my second master's in August. Congrats. That's so exciting. Currently wondering if I should set goals in September or just relax a little until January. So <laughs> I think you should do both. I think 
that's four months. And that's a lot of time. You can make a lot of changes and for like a lot of things can happen in four months. And so I would just do a balance. I would set maybe one goal or two goals that are really important to you and spend some time working on them, September, October, November, December, and then spend the rest of the time relaxing. That would be my advice. What is my favorite time of day? I don't know. Depends on the day. <laughs> during the weekdays, it's like the nighttime. But during the weekends, it's like the morning. Final type stickers sized for bookmarks. It's an interesting idea, Heather. I have a to-do list I make for work. Sometimes things come up that I can't jot down quickly with pen and paper, any other online online tools for to-do list other than tasks or outlook. So for me, for work, I literally keep a running Word document. <laughs> it's very not fancy, but it totally works for me. Um, you could also just like send an email to yourself and then transfer it to pen and paper when you have the time to do that. That's what I do with my personal to-dos. I will text myself when I think of something and then transfer it to um, sorry, Charlie, it's distracting me. Transfer it to pen and paper when I am back to wherever I keep my that that to-do list. What are my favorite channels to watch daily? I don't know if you mean TV or YouTube. I don't have cable, so I don't really have any favorite TV channels, uh, minus all the shows I watched that I talked about earlier. Um, Google Keep for running to-do lists at work. We can't access Google anything. I mean, you can access Google like Google, but you can't access Google Mail or Calendar or Drive or Keep or any of those things from my work computer. So that's not an option for me. Sticky Notes app on your work laptop. I use Sticky Notes on my personal laptop for stuff. Um, not to-do lists so much as like quotes and when in the when I'm in the middle of something like when I'm in the middle of watching a I'm watching my YouTube video back and I'm figuring out what links I need to put in the description box I use a sticky note for that on my computer um, Lisa I love that you always ask this question what is your weekly highlight since the last time we met um so I had, I had a really great weekend that you'll see in the vlog on Friday. Um, I got to meet Elise from Plan With Elise, who's been here in the chat. I know she told me that she multitasks a lot during the live, and so um, she's not as active in the chat, but I got to meet her for the first time in person on Saturday, and then the Friends experience on Sunday with our friends, and it was just such a good time. Um, and I did not work at all over the weekend. Like, I, I did some household type things, but I did not work on my business at all for two days, and it was just like, it was just really nice. I just really loved it. I'm at favorite YouTube channels. Oh, goodness. I don't have anybody that I watch daily because nobody nobody posts daily. Um, my favorite YouTube channels right now, I really, I mean, I always click Cindy's whenever her she has a video that comes up um, and always make an effort to watch hers. Um, honestly, I'm listening to a lot more podcasts right now than I am watching YouTube. We did have a great time. It was so nice. It was so fun. And we totally matched. And we twinned. And it was great. All right, I am all caught up on comments and questions. I need to install the air conditioning here in this office. We finally ordered air conditioners. And they arrived on Saturday. And we... We installed the one in the bedroom on the weekend because we needed it to sleep. But I've been postponing the one in my office because it's been cool here. And so I haven't really felt like I needed it. And right now, I like really feel like I could do do with an air, condition, air conditioner. <laughs> I'm very hot right now. Um, but it's okay. It's on the floor. I'm hiding it with my body. Actually, you can't even see it. I'm just kidding. <sighs> Someday, we will live in a place with central air, and that won't be a problem. What is a good way to bounce back from failure? I failed my CPE exams three times and it's getting harder and harder to stay motivated. Mallory, that is a really great question. Um, 
I think one of the things I've heard recently a lot, like I keep hearing the same phrase a lot, is that you are not your failures. Like you are not a failure. The activity and the action that you're taking resulted in a unsuccessful, I know that's just a fancy way to say failure, but you, are, you Mallory, are not a failure. And you just have to remember that. And then I think just taking time to not jump right back into it. Because when we jump right back into it, we try to do the same thing. We try to do it exactly the same way. And I think that we, that results usually in more failure because we try to do it the same way we did it before. And if we take a step back and like take a breath, take some step away from it for a little bit. And I know with something like the CPA exams, they offer them so frequently that it can be so you just like, you don't want to lose everything that you learned. So you just want to jump back in and take it again. I would totally recommend to step back for a second, take a break, don't study for a little bit, and then reevaluate how you're studying and what isn't working, and then jump back in and focus on doing something slightly different to help you the next time. I hope that helps. I definitely had some struggles when I was taking actuarial exams. So I know what that's like. The benefit was ours were only offered every six months. So it was kind of a, and it took two months to get results. Um, so it was kind of a forced break every time, but I know what that's like. Ooh, where do you get your craft memory planning inspo from? Like December daily, we could the life on little words. So Rachel, I mostly just watch Allie. Allie Edwards, who does all of these projects. And I just do a slightly scaled back version from hers. I don't do any stamping um, because I know I'm not good at stamping. And I don't do any painting because I know it's not my thing. Um, so I just kind of do a slightly scaled back. I do also follow other people that I really like. I really love Tazi. I talked about her during December Daily. She lives here in New York. And so I do feel like I vibe a lot with her style as well. Um, but for the most part, I just keep it really simple. And so I don't have a lot of major inspiration. Um, maybe someday when I have lots of supplies, that'll be different. My top favorite singers, musicians. Oof. That's a hard one. Um, Maroon 5 has always been a favorite of mine. I love Adam Levine and I love Maroon 5. Um, Garth Brooks, always a favorite. I will always go back to his music. First concert I ever saw live and I just love everything he does. And anybody on Broadway? <laughs> like anybody? Um, yeah, I don't know. Those are the two that pop that jump out at me. Sammy, um, we talked about Fear is My Homeboy. Yes, I love that book. Have I looked into the Vibe and Thrive Planner? I have. I did a review of it, which I will dig up the link for back in December, I think is when I reviewed it. Um, I haven't used it myself. And I talk about this in the review, but mostly just because it's um, it's big and it's got the times by half hour. It would be like I would do my work planning stuff and my personal stuff in one planner. And I just don't know if I want that. Um, but I just I love Judy and I love her podcast as well. And I've been I've been feeling a little bit inspired lately to maybe pick up that planner and give it a go. Um, so I might I might. Have I tried the lemon loaf tea? I have not, Brittany. I have so much tea that I need to work through that I am still kind of still working on that. How am I liking Club Moxie? Haley, I have hardly participated in it, um, and that's totally my fault. I know some people are having amazing experiences. I did attend the live session last Tuesday, um, but I haven't done anything else. That's it. That's the extent. So I need to, I need to uh, get with it. Allison, this is a fun question. What Broadway show are you seeing first when they open? So um, our friends, what we had brunch with over the weekends, just asked us that same question. Um, Sam and I are leaning towards six. We actually, we looked up tickets though, because they are on sale now. And um, even for previews on a weekday, like a Tuesday night, they are crazy, like <laughs> crazy. Um, and I don't know if that's um, a hype thing or I don't know if that's a... Broadway needs to recoup some things thing, but 
we definitely had intentions of seeing a lot once they reopened um, because we want to get through everything before the new bunch comes in in March. So we had like our list and we were going to get going and six was kind of at the top of our list, six or Hades down. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to figure that out budget wise a little bit more or not get orchestra seats, unfortunately, which it is what it is. But. Do you have products that you are not in love with, but have but have, or do you just give up and buy the new thing? I keep going back to a new planner idea after a couple of months, but I hate waste. Mia, this is a great question. And it is, it's really tough for me to answer this um, as someone who makes YouTube videos. Cause a lot of times I have a lot of planners in my stash that I have been sent for review. And so if I feel like I'm in a rut and I can need to switch planners, I can easily just switch planners and I have other options. But for someone who doesn't have that option, I know that it can be really tough. Um, what I've advised people to do is try using it in a different way. If you use stickers, don't use stickers. If you don't use stickers, try stickers. If you color code, try not color coding, vice versa. Try different pens, try different colored pens, try different, putting things in different places on the planner, like moving the, the way you use the product and change that up to try and get out of a rut a little bit. I've also said that taking a break can really help you get out of a rut and then Worst case scenario is yes, you buy a new planner. And this is why I wish every company would offer three or six month planners. So that you could buy something and not have an entire year's worth of planning with you. Lights Planner Action does have that option. By the way, you can get just three months of a planner. So if you're looking for something to try something different, it's a good option. Do I still use stickers in my planning? So on my daily planner, I do not. When I finally get back to my um, weekly memory keeping, I will go back to using stickers, but right now I'm not. <laughs> it's all of her music, Amanda. So it's all of Alanis sets. We actually know um, one of the producers on the show. She's a good friend of ours. And it is, it's it's like Mama Mia, except it's Alanis sets music instead of ABBA. And a lot more, yes, and a lot more reimagined than what they did with the ABBA music. Yes, I'm so excited that Broadway is going to be back too. Heather, this is a fun question. Have you always been crafty? What kind of hobbies did you have before planning and memory keeping? So yes, I've always been crafty, totally inspired by and encouraged and supported by my grandmother, who I've talked about my Mima before, but she did stamping wooden stamps and she would make cards and scrapbooks and all kinds of things. And so I did stamping with her and we did some super crafty things like paint. we would get paints out and we would make paper, like make paper um, from other paper. And it was, it was super cool. And my grandfather also did woodworking. He still, he still does do woodworking. And so that super crafty side, it's just that whole side of my family. We always like were crafting something. Um, and then my mom also did scrapbooking, like the traditional 12 by 12 scrapbooking pages. We would go to the scrapbook store and like have a crop with all the neighborhood women. And, you know, me and my best friend would like have our little baby scrapbooks that our moms, we weren't allowed to like buy new products. It was just like what our moms would hand us of their products. And it was super fun. Um, so that was kind of my craftiness then. And then in college, I, uh, reinvigorated invigorated my love for crafting through the sorority and doing sorority type crafting things for my big, for my little, all those kinds of things. So, yeah. Hamida, that's a really tough question to answer because it varies a lot by show. It varies a lot by how many seats they have in their theater. It varies a lot by the day of the week, all kinds of things. But let's just say it was like double what we thought we were going to That's a really great way to think about it, Tammy. If it's keeping you from getting things done, then it's important to change. Yeah. Lisa, have I heard anything about my office reopening? No, they're still saying August 2nd or whatever that Monday is. Um, we have a company-wide town hall in two weeks and the rumors that we'll learn a little bit more at that event. 
What is one thing in your life that you are looking forward to this week? Amanda, that's a fun question. My One of my best friends, one of my bridesmaids is turning 30. And so her fiance has planned a super fun weekend. I can't tell you what it is because she doesn't know. And I don't think she's going to watch this between now and Friday. But um, we have a lot of fun things planned to celebrate her this weekend. And I'm just really excited to spend time with them and her and celebrate her. Yeah. It should be fun. I just answered this question like maybe five, 10 minutes ago. I am a part of Club Moxie, but I haven't done much besides last week's live session I joined in on. So I don't really have a good, a good answer there. Not yet anyways. My tea is almost gone, guys. Hmm. The good thing I have water nearby. I'm done with my water though. That's why I got to have tea. This is like bonus water if I have extra water. I already hit my water bowl for the day. Mm. Lisa, how is your working out going? It is going really, really, really well. I think taking out the decision-making process, it's part of my workout morning has made such a difference. Um, I've always been kind of like a plan, like I need a workout plan and I wasn't, I mean, we have a Peloton, like I don't need to pay for a workout plan or structure or any of those kinds of things. And so if you missed, I don't know what video I talked about it in, all I did was I went through the Peloton app and I favorited 10, 15, 20 minute rides with music that I liked. And then I favorited upper body workouts, five, 10, 15 minutes with music that I like. And each day I pick one and then I pick another. And, and by pick, I mean, I do the next one that I haven't done yet, basically is what I'm doing. And so it always adds up to 30 minutes. It's always music that I'm going to like. I don't have to scroll through playlists in the morning and then talk myself out of it or talk myself into a shorter ride. And I just have been consistently doing 30 minutes a day, one and one. It's been a week and a half, I guess, at this point. So I guess your definition of really great in mind. I feel like it's been really great. It's been a week and a half, been very consistent. It's working. It's working for me. Thank you, Crystal. I got this when I was in Texas um, with my stepmom. We went shopping uh, one of the days. We tried to go shopping to find her a dress for the wedding. We did not find that, but I found this hoodie and I really like it. It's from Ethelada. It was on sale and I just was obsessed. It's probably the a size bigger than I would have wanted. I They didn't have the size I wanted. They had oh, two sizes below this and then they had this one. Obviously, I was like, I'm going to go bigger rather than smaller. So, but I really love it. Did I go back to seeing my nutritionist, Allison? Not yet. I'm going to give myself a little bit of time and see how things go, but I might, uh, I might em end up back there, <laughs> back there soon. Do you like Cultivate What Matters better than Moxie? I like them both for different reasons. I personally use Cultivate What Matters because that's what works for me and my goals. I did a video last year during the launch time about the difference between them, the not necessarily pros and cons, but questions to ask yourself to figure out which one works better for you and which one is fits more with your goal setting system. And I think both of them are amazing in their own regards and you just have to figure out which one works best for you. And that is what I did I did a video on that. So if you want to check that out, I think, I think they're both great. You just pick, pick the one that works better for you. I think I just repeated myself like 14 times. I was distracted. I was distracted by the fact that the times don't match up because I started a couple minutes late. So it's a certain time, but I can see my countdown clock and it's, it don't match. It's just not that big of a deal. <laughs> Thanks for always hanging out with me. Putting up with my weird quirks. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Any other last minute questions? Mm. My nails match, which is funny because in real life, these are two very different yellows, but the lighting is making them look kind of similar. Also, I need a new lamp. That lamp is like not, it doesn't go with anything. It doesn't go with the vibe. I don't like it. I need a new lamp. All right. Any other questions, you guys? I don't know if they're just um, comments are delayed for a second. You've been using both systems and you feel like you need a combination of the two. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. It's tough. They, they both have, I don't like saying pros and cons because they're not cons. They're just different methodologies to setting goals and achieving goals. And you just have to figure out which one is a better system for you, um, which support system is better for you. And they're just different. They're, they are just different. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's depending on the season of life that you're in. One could work better than the other. 
Um, or it's just familiar, 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 familiarity. Oh, why can't I say that word? I've been using my power sheets now for years. And so, and it works. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. And so I just want to stick with something that works. I know Lisa, but a lamp is not on the priority list for home goods and how we're going to carry all the things home that I want to get at home goods is another question. So, yeah. Why did I stop with the nutritionist? Do I still count calories? So I stopped with her because she felt like I was ready and she wanted to give me a soft graduation and let me go try things on her own. Unfortunately, and I had things, had life stayed the same when that happened, I think she would have been right and I would have been able to keep up with it. But I had a big life event happen right when she gave me that graduation. And so it just didn't, it didn't line up and I kind of I just fell off. Um, so right now I am not counting calories. Right now I'm not tracking anything related to food. My quarter two focus is on my movement. So I'm focusing on getting in my movement, my working out and all those things. And I'm just kind of, I'm trying to make better decisions with my food, but I'm not counting anything, restricting anything right now. What candle am I burning? Um, sparkling woods. It's almost gone though. And then there'll be time. Ooh, Amy, favorite freebie from a planner event, door prize or swag item? Honestly, I don't remember, which is terrible because that defeats the whole purpose of companies giving out swag. Um, I remember loving the hat from Simplified, and I still have that and wear that when I'm, when we were in Texas over the summer, I wore that hat a lot, all the time. Um... Yeah, I don't, that is terrible. Did I make a cleaning schedule? I did, Corey. I shared it during this month's goals video. Maybe it was last month's goals video, my April goals video. Um, right now I'm working on like the deep cleaning part of it. I haven't done that goal yet. Mia, is it cheating if you press on the brakes on your tending list when you realize you committed to too much? Nope. Not even close. In fact, it is the opposite of cheating. It is succeeding. It is figuring out that you don't have time to do all the things on your list. I applaud you for realizing that. And I am so proud that you are just going to cross things off. I would encourage you to keep one thing on your list. Like instead of just like putting away your power sheets for the whole month. And if you want to put away the power sheets because you don't want to see all the cross off, that's fine. But I would love, I would encourage you to pick one thing from your list and let that one thing be your focus and let the rest of it go. I, that is definitely not, not cheating. Not at all. The mink. Oh yeah, that was a good one. I actually ended up giving that away because again, not super crafty, not that, not crafty enough to use the mink. That was a good gift though. One year, Aaron Condren did $25 gift cards. And by one year, I mean, I think that was the first year and that was probably the best one. When I get bored, how do you switch up your goals without feeling flaky? So that's why I reset goals every month. That's why I like the power sheet system. I talked about this in the, in that video where I compare Moxie Life and power sheets. I like that every month I get to switch things up. And so I know that if something doesn't feel good or it's feeling boring, I only have to get to the end of the month and then I get to change it. Or you can do it. Amanda does and randomize. She randomizes her habits every day so that it feels different. What is your favorite recipe of all time that I have made that I could eat for the rest of my life? Does it have to be like a savory thing or can it be a dessert? Because I am not a great cook. I can cook and I cook dinner pretty much every night, but I do not, I'm not a, I'm not a good cook. So there's nothing that I have made that I would want to eat every day for the rest of my life that's savory. Um, some of the desserts I've made, yes, but not necessarily something savory. Something my mom has made, yeah. My grandmother, absolutely. My dad, yeah, my dad's egg, eggs Benedict. I, I guess that's, that's savory. I could eat that every day. Sam, he cooks a great steak. I could eat that every day. Me? No. <laughs> Michelle, when is the new launch for Cultiv Cultivate What Matters? It's always in October. So, yeah. All right, y'all. It is almost the end of our time together. So I'm going to pop up my last question for you, which is what is one thing that you will do this week to make progress on your goals? Notice how I say will, not something that you want to do, something that you will get done. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be super small, but small progress 
is still progress. I'm like, where's my, where's my water cup? Small progress is still progress. And if you just do one small step, it's still, it's still moving forward. It's amazing how she does that. <laughs> Waiting for the comments to come in. Oh, here we go. Clean your floors. Oh, doesn't the whole place feel clean when the floors are clean? It's amazing. Meal plan. Make a list of all the things you need to get done before the baby is here. Ashley, I'm so excited for you. Focus on drinking water and keeping up with school. Prepping the kitchen and pantry for a reset week. So good. I just cleaned our pantry over the weekend too. It desperately needed it. Meal plan breakfast. Ooh, that's a good one. Most important meal of the day. Your new memory planner. Yay. So fun. Ooh, revamp the colors on your blog. That's fun, Lisa. Congrats. Get the inspection for your new home. Gina, I can't believe you're moving. So exciting. Clean out the fridge. Oh, man, Aaron, that fridge is, it just feels so different. Finish your week in the life. I love it. I love it. Y'all, again, one small step can, it just, it just makes a difference. It makes a difference. It gets you moving. It gets your momentum going. So if there is something that feels, you feel stuck on, pick one tiny step. That will feel so silly to do that one step, but when you do it, it's going to spark that momentum in you to keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and end this live here. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. If you enjoyed this, if you found something valuable, please give it a thumbs up before you head out. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday focused on helping you achieve your goals. Have a great night.